Hi, this is James Zeng, and today I'm going to be um, reading a book that I wrote called Multifamily 101, What Every Investor Needs to Know. So I wrote this book um, essentially after working uh, for five years as a mortgage broker, originating close to $750 million worth of loans, and then also investing in close to um, approximately 25 properties um, as a limited partner. So Let's jump right into it. So contents, what we're going to cover in the book is um, why multifamily, right? So cash flow, tax advantages, management, diversified tenant base, valuation method, leverage, inflation hedge, lower volatility, inside information, and control. But at the same time, there are challenges to overcome in multifamily. So a liquidity, large initial investment, partnerships, lack of diversification, and access to deals. Then we will cover how to invest as an individual, general partner, limited partner, how to finance deals, and then getting started um, in those different parts. So individual investor, general partner, limited partner. And then in the appendixes, we're going to talk about building your team, investment groups, um, questions to ask a general partner before you invest, um, questions to ask before choosing a mortgage broker, and then underwriting, and then advice from experts. Introduction. Teacher is somebody who teaches you something that cannot be unseen and it changes your life forever. I started my financial journey like most people. I graduated from University of Texas at Austin with a finance degree and started working in the corporate finance world. I stayed at G Capital for 10 years, steadily contributing to my 401k and Roth IRA. Following Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps, I had a nice 401k balance and a paid off home. However, I hadn't learned anything about investing after 10 years. So in 2015, my world changed when GE announced it was selling its entire commercial real estate division to Blackstone. Everyone in my office and the Dallas office was going to be let go and they would need to find a new job. Depending on how you were positioned financially, there was either joy or fear in the faces of everyone in that room. At that point, I realized how important passive cash flow was to an individual's life. When I looked at my paid for house and retirement accounts, I realized monthly passive cash flow was zero. At this point, I had a decision to make. I could either continue investing in my 401k and IRA or learn how to start investing my money into real estate that cash flowed every month. While I was a loan underwriter at GE, I went through the Great Recession during 2008, 2010. We originated loans on almost every type of commercial real estate property from office, industrial, retail, multifamily, and self-storage. The two properties that had the almost no foreclosures were multifamily and self-storage. So in 2015, I knew I had to start investing in commercial real estate. And this book tells the story of why I chose multifamily. So here's a summary, advantages of multifamily, cash flow, tax advantages, management, diversified tenant base, valuation method, leverage, inflation hedge, lower volatility, inside information, control, challenges, illiquidity, large investment amount, partnerships, lack of diversification, and access to deals. So why multifamily? Number one, cash flow. So in 2015, I had been quote unquote investing for 10 years and I had no passive income. Passive income is how much income comes in if you stop working. Your expenses are monthly, so your income should be as well. Every day, tenants go to work and pay you 25% or more of their income to live at your property. After collecting rent and paying all your expenses, including mortgage payments, there should be enough cash flow to distribute to you as the investor. After investing in multifamily properties as limited partners for four, year, four years, I now have generated enough passive income to cover my expenses. So example, Typical multifamily cash flows are anywhere from five to 10% cash on cash. You invest 100,000, you receive anywhere from five to 10,000 per year. In addition to the cash flow you receive when you own the property, if you have improved the property's net operating income, you will generate cash from the residual sale. Typical returns on multifamily properties average about 10 to 15% annual return, consisting of cash flow and capital gain on the residual sale. Number two, tax advantages. So cash flow is a tax sheltered is tax sheltered through depreciation. For example, the five to ten thousand you receive on your hundred thousand dollar investment is not taxed as ordinary income. So at the end of the year, you receive a K one if investing as a limited partner that shows a negative net rental income. Due to bonus depreciation, which was recently enacted, a hundred thousand dollar investment could provide a thirty to fifty thousand net rental loss in year one. If you are a real estate professional, you can use this to offset ordinary income. If not, you can use it to offset other passive income. When you sell the property, you will have to recapture the, the depreciation, but it is typically at a lower rate than your ordinary income tax rate. And 1031 exchanges, if you buy multifamily properties as an individual investor, you can use 1031 exchange 
your gain from one property to a larger one without paying taxes if you identify a property within 45 days and close within 180 days of the original sale. Number three, management. You can self-manage your property or have third-party property management. Third-party property managers typically charge three to 4% of total revenue depending on the size of the property. Third-party property managers hire the staff, pay the bills, lease the units, do the repairs, and send the investor weekly and or monthly reports. It usually takes at least 50 units to justify having full-time maintenance and property manager. Anything less than 50 units, you'll have to utilize part-time staff or self-manage the property. Majority of the properties I invest in are over 100 units to leverage the economies of scales of full-time staff. Most people do not want to get into single-family or multifamily investments because they fear the management headaches. But as an owner of a multifamily business, you do not have the key to the office or any of the units. You are the asset manager, manager and manage the manager. Next advantage, diversified tenant base. So many of the properties that were foreclosed on in the Great Recession of 2008 could not make their mortgage payments because they had large tenant concentrations. Office, retail, industrial would lose one or two tenants and their occupancy would drop to 50 or 60%, which made the owner have to come out of pocket to cover the mortgage payment. Due to the size of these commercial properties, this cannot be sustained for a long period. Large multifamily properties over 50 units can absorb tenants moving out and not impact your ability to pay your expenses or your mortgage payment. So while 5 to 10% of your tenant base might be moving out a month, there are always new tenants looking to lease your units. Tenants are typically turning over on a rolling calendar basis, not all in one month. Reviewing a property's historical occupancy and the submarket's occupancy, you can get a good idea of forecasting your future occupancy of a property. Keeping multifamily properties higher than 90% occupied is considered stabilized and keeps the cash flow available for distributions to investors consistent. All right, next advantage, valuation method, forced depreciation. So multifamily properties are valued based on net operating income or NOI. So net operating income divided by cap rate equals value. So NOI of 100,000 divided by 10% cap rate equals a million dollar value. NOI is derived of revenue, which is rents and other income, minus your expenses, taxes, insurance, payroll, utilities, repairs, admin. And then the cap rate is if you bought a deal all cash, so no debt, this is the return you would receive on your investment. Investors have no control over this rate. It is based on what investors are currently willing to pay for a property on the market. The cap rate can be determined by talking with listing brokers, appraisers, investors in a specific market. Higher the risk, the higher the cap rate should be. A new Class A property should have a lower cap rate than a Class C property built 50 years ago. In Texas, Class A properties are 2000 or newer. Class B properties are built 1980s, 1990s, and Class C's 1960s, 1970s. So forced depreciation is when you increase the NOI and thus increase the value of the property. You have control over the rent you charge and how you run your expenses for the property. Investors and lenders value net rental revenue increases more and utility decreases the most. So you do not have to wait for the market or the properties surrounding you to go up in value, similar to single family comparative market analysis. You have control of your NOI. And as an investor, you can increase the value by increasing rents or operating your property property efficiently by reducing expenses. So example, increasing rents $20 on hundred units is 2000 a month times 12, 24,000 in annual increase in revenue, 24,000 divided by a 10% cap rate is a $240,000 increase in value. So that was just $20 on hundred units. All right. Next advantage is leverage. Financing is readily available for multifamily properties through Fannie, Freddie and banks. So debt is available for multifamily properties up to 75 to 80% of the purchase price and loan terms can be anywhere from five to 12 years fixed with 20 to 30 year amortization. Multifamily properties are self collateralizing, which means lenders are counting on the property to make the payment and not you personally. So you can get non-recourse financing for stabilized properties through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Recourse loans are standard for single family homes. They allow banks to come after your personal balance sheet if they were to foreclose on you. Non-recourse loans through Fannie or Freddie do not put other assets at risk in the case of a delinquency or foreclosure. Another advantage of multifamily properties is the ability to do a cash out refinance. So if you purchase a property for $5 million with a $4 million loan and put a million dollars in equity and then increase the value of the property to $8 million after increasing rents and optimizing expenses, you then have the ability to refinance the $4 million loan and get a $6 million loan due to the increased NOI and value. The $6 million loan would pay off the $4 million loan and the investor would keep $2 million in cash at close tax-free. It is tax-free because the proceeds came in the form of debt. 
The first property I invested in, in DFW in 2015 was able to achieve about a 15 or 50% return of equity to refinance after two years of ownership due to the increase in rents at the property. Inflation hedge is the next advantage. Office, retail, industrial leases are typically three to five years and sometimes longer. If rents increase in the market, you cannot go back to your tenant and ask for a higher rental rate. However, if rents do decrease in a market like they did in 2009, tenants will ask for rent concessions as they will threaten to vacate the space. Lease terms for multifamily properties are typically 12 months. If rental rates increase, you can increase at renewal and for new tenants. If inflation continues to increase, which it typically does at about 2% annually, you can increase your rents continually. Typically, your loan interest rate is fixed for five to 12 years, and you know exactly um, monthly, you know the exact monthly payment for your loan term. While your debt payment is fixed, you can continue to raise rents over the life of the investment, which just gives you the ability to increase investor cash flow. Next advantage is lower volatility. So multifamily properties are a hard physical asset that supplies a human, fundamental human need. You can go out to the property, touch it. It consists of land and improvements, and you will essentially never go to zero. The stock market can have significant volatility, and one day you can wake up with a significantly lower balance in your account than the day before. The real estate market moves significantly slower, which gives investors time to adjust and be prepared for a coming recession. Stock market prices move so quick that you don't have time to prepare or adjust. Even compared to other commercial properties such as retail, industrial, office, multifamilies have less volatility in cash flows and valuations. In the recession of 2008, multifamily properties went down in value and rents decreased, but investors with long-term debt were still able to cash flow and come out the other side with higher rents and higher valuation. Inside information is the next advantage. After 10 years of investing in a 401k and Roth IRA, Across index funds and dividend paying stocks, I was not a better investor, nor did I have any additional information about the companies I was investing in. In stocks, it is illegal to trade on inside information, and very rarely can you find a quote unquote deal as stocks are priced second by second. What I found in multifamily real estate is that every deal makes you a better investor. When you invest, you learn more about the tenant quality, rents, and amenities of a property and submarket, which give you an information advantage over other investors. After investing in 23 properties totaling over 6,500 units in almost every submarket in DFW, I now receive a monthly report telling me rent and occupancy of every property, which allows me to make more informed investment decisions on future deals. Next advantage, control. You have control over your investment property. The business model is very simple. Increase revenue, optimize expenses. Compared to stock investments in which you do not know the CEO or have any impact on the operations of a company, real estate is as hands-on as you want it to be. As a general partner, you will make, be making the decisions on rehab, rental rates, and property management company. If something is not working, you personally can change it. As a limited partner, you will have less control of the day-to-day -day management of the property, but you choose the general partner you want to work with, the property you want to invest in. These multifamily properties are run like a business and one that you can fully understand after reviewing the financials for a few hours, unlike some companies traded on the stock market. So everything sounds great. What are the challenges, right? So let's talk about the challenges. One quote that I like is, small minds talk about people, mediocre minds talk about events, great minds talk about ideas by Eleanor Roosevelt. So I want to talk to you about the idea and the challenges to overcome. So I've given the reasons why you should invest in multifamily, but I also want to give you some of the challenges of investing in multifamily. If you're able to overcome these challenges, then you can move forward with investing in multifamily. I hope this discussion of an idea of multifamily leads to an actual investment. Challenge one is illiquidity. So once you invest in a deal, you cannot get your money out for three, five, or sometimes even 10 years, depending on the business plan. You must be able to wait and not need the money for the term of the investment. If you do need the money, the general partners will sometimes buy your limited partner shares, but at a discount. In order to mitigate the illiquidity aspect of multifamily, I recommend holding more cash, one to two years of expenses compared to normal recommendations of three to six months for a personal emergency fund. Challenge two, large initial investment. So most passive limited partnership investments are $50,000 minimums. If you do not have this to invest at one time, you will not be able to invest. As deals get larger and the amount of equity needed for the down payment increases, general partners will typically require $100,000 minimum to keep the number of investors manageable. Individual investor, investors will need to put down the entire down payment for the deal and you will need liquidity after the down payment to qualify for the loan, at least 10% of the loan amount. 
most people invest in a 401k monthly or with each paycheck. I remember back in 2014 when I stopped contributing to a 401k, even though it had a match. It was not an easy decision to make at the time, but I knew I had to save up at least 50000 to invest in my first multifamily deal. Challenge number three, partnerships. In order to invest in a large multifamily property, let's say 100 units or more, you need to partner with other people. As a general partner, you will need to have other individuals sign with you on the loan and others invest equity as limited partners. As a limited partner, you will have to give up control of your investment to a general partner. In both cases, you have to work with other people, which can lead to problems if a deal does not perform as forecasted. I, meet with general, I met with general partners, reviewed their historical deals and track record before investing in any of their deals. I also spoke to the limited partners who invested in the general partners' previous deals to hear their feedback on the sponsor. My best advice is choose your partners wisely and do as much research upfront about your partners. Challenge four is lack of diversification. Since the initial investment is significantly higher than a 401k or IRA, you will have less properties to spread your risk across. As a limited partner, I was able to spread my capital across 23 properties and 6,500 units. However, as a general partner, you will have to focus on two or three properties and manage these properties very closely. While you lose diversification compared to a stock portfolio, you have significantly more control over the operation of a property. Andrew Carnegie said, the way to become rich is to put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket. Challenge five, access to deals. As a limited partner, you must build a relationship with general partners and be able to invest when deals come up. Most people have to join a multifamily investment group, which costs anywhere from twenty dollars to 30000 or meet individual general partners by attending conferences or meetups in the city they, they would like to invest in. Some deals are limited to accredited investors, 506C. These investors have over a million dollar net worth, excluding their personal residence, or earn over 200000 as an individual or 300000 as a joint couple for the last two years. As an individual investor, you must get to know listing brokers and owners to get access to deals for sale. There are typically only 15 to 20 listing brokers in a market that control over 80% of the deals listed for sale, so it can be difficult to get your first deal of size. Joining a multifamily investment group is the fastest way to get to know general partners and limited partners in your target market. If you do not want to join a group, you will have to network by attending conferences and meetups. All of my limited partnership investments came about due to networking with general partners through my work at G Capital and Old Capital. So how to invest. So you heard the advantages. We talked about the challenges to overcome. Now, how do you invest in deals? There are three main ways to invest in multifamily, individual, general partner, or limited partner. Depending on your balance sheet and the amount of time you have to dedicate to investing, you will, will determine which way you, you should start in the multifamily investing. Based on my current circumstances, I've chosen to be a limited partner um, or passive investor. And I have personally seen investors achieve massive levels of success in all three ways. So individual. Typical profile of an individual investor is someone with a strong balance sheet looking to own properties with no partners. Not only do they have to come up with a down payment, they need to be able to qualify for the loan on their own. Net worth needs to be greater than the loan amount. Post-closed liquidity needs to be greater than 10% of the loan amount. So advantages, you control the investment decisions. No limited partners to answer to. And you have your ability to roll gains to larger properties through 1031s. Disadvantage, depending on the amount of capital, you might not be able to acquire large enough units to get full-time property management. You have to sign on the loan, you have to find the property, and you have a higher concentration risk because you only own a few properties and you have to ask to manage your deal. Your focus is on finding new deals to invest in and ask to manage your existing deals. So general partner, other terms for this are syndicator, lead investor, sponsor, typical profile investor who puts deals together, leveraging other limited partner money, other people's balance sheet and third party property management. Typically, um, they cannot come up with the down payment or qualify for the loan on their own to buy deals that can justify third-party property management. So the advantages of a general partner are earn acquisition fee, um, sponsorship equity, and or larger return compared to cash invested in the deal. You have control over investment decisions, ability to leverage other people's money to buy larger properties with no size limit. Disadvantages, you sign on the loan. You must spend time finding and negotiating the deal. You must raise equity and manage limited partners, must be an asset management, asset manager managing the third party property manager and operations of the property. Your focus is finding new deals and raising equity from limited partners. Limited partner. Typical profile is investor who has limited time, but money to invest. So doctor, lawyer, accountant who has a good W2 income, but doesn't have time to find and manage the deal. So advantages, you don't have to find the deal. You have no management responsibility. You receive depreciation tax benefits. You receive the benefits of economies of scales of larger properties. You can diversify across multiple 
uh, general partners and markets. You can leverage experienced operators and learn from experienced operators. Um, disadvantages, no management control, no control cash flow as general partner makes investment decision on sale, refinance, and distributions. Lower return due to sponsorship equity um, general partner gets for putting the deal together and typically cannot 1031 exchange. Your focus is finding general partners to invest in. So how to finance multifamily properties. So you've, you've overcome the challenges, you wanna invest in properties, you've decided how you're gonna do it. So how do you finance properties? Um, so since 2015, I've originated close to 125 multifamily loans, over $750 million. And these are the three questions I ask investors when I talk to them about financing a new property. Number one, is it stabilized? So 90% occupied for 90 days. Number two, do you have prior multifamily experience? And number three, what is the sponsorship group's net worth and liquidity? So there's four main types of loans. Number one is a bank loan. This is a recourse loan that is typically 75% leverage, three to five years, and um, requires um, the new investor to sign personally for this loan. Um, the amortization is typically 20 to 25 years. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are what most people use and what most of the loans that we do. They are non-recourse, stabilized properties, 90% occupied for 90 days. The loans are typically a million dollars and higher. And the loan terms are five, seven, 10, and sometimes 12 years. And it is interest only and then 30 year amortization after that. And then bridge loans. Bridge loans are three to five years. Um, they can be non-recourse over $5 million. And this is for more experienced investors. And this can be um, up to 80% loan to cost. So getting started. So every decision in life should move you from a laborer to a capitalist. So when I heard that phrase for the first time, it illustrated the point that your money should be working harder than you are. Earned income is your means to passive income. So spend your time acquiring assets that generate passive income. There are many pathways to financial freedom where your passive income exceeds your monthly expenses, but I have found multifamily investing to be one of the most proven ways for an individual to reach financial freedom. You have taken the first step in educating, educating yourself on why and how to invest in multifamily properties. The next step is to take action. So as an individual investor, um, complete your personal financial statement, get with a mortgage broker, determine how large of a property you can purchase. Choose the market you want to invest in, meet those listing brokers, and then choose the best management company, and then start underwriting properties and get a loan term sheet and make offers. Once that offer is accepted, apply for the loan and send a down payment to the title company to close the transaction. As a general partner, you start in the same spot, complete a personal financial statement, determine how large of a property you can buy on your own. But depending on what size property you want to purchase, you might need to add key principles to sign with you for multifamily experience, net worth, or post-close liquidity. The net worth of your sponsorship group needs to be greater than the loan amount, and your post-close liquidity needs to be greater than 10% of the loan amount. Choose the market, choose the property management company, and start building a database of investors who can write fifty dollars to $100,000 checks into your deal. Start underwriting deals, get loan term sheets, make offers. Once an offer is accepted, you have to apply for a loan and work with the attorney to create a private placement memorandum or PPM. You raise equity from limited partners through either a webinar, email, or phone calls and send a down payment to the title company to close the transaction. So forming your sponsorship group. If you wanna be a general partner, you need to form your sponsorship group to win the deal and qualify for the loan. I like to think about sponsorship groups as putting together a puzzle. Each general partner should be bringing a piece of the puzzle or they should not be included. Most deals consist of a small group of general partners and a larger group of loaner partners. The general partnership group is compensated with fees or higher percentage of the deal. Let's say 80% goes to the limited partner, 20% to the general partner for putting the deal together or a larger split of the deal after preferred return. The individuals in the general partnership need essentially four things in order of priority. Number one, property to buy, so deal under contract. Number two, multifamily ownership experience. Um, number three, ability to raise equity. Number four, net worth and liquidity. The more of these items you have, the less need for additional general partners to sign with you on the deal. Every one of these pieces of the puzzle you bring to a general partnership, the more valuable you become and thus your percentage of equity increases. Example, if the sponsorship group is receiving 20% compensation for putting the deal together, a common breakout might be 9% to the first investor for finding the deal, raising equity, 8% um, 
to investor two, multifamily experience in raising equity, uh, 2% to investor three for raising equity and net worth and liquidity, and then uh, 1% for somebody signing with net worth and liquidity. As you can see, the most valuable items are finding the deal and multifamily experience as less people have them. The more common items such as raising equity, net worth, and liquidity are more common, thus they receive less compensation. Awesome. So third way, limited partner. Um, getting started as a limited partner, you need to meet general partners in the market you want to invest in and get on their distribution list. This can be accomplished either through multifamily investment groups, conferences, meetups, crowdfunding platforms online. You must build substantive um, pre-existing relationships with general partners. Number two, research the track record of the general partner, review historical offer offerings, and speak to previous investors. Number three, when deals get sent to you, review the underwriting of the deal and visit the property if possible. Number four, watch webinars, um, read the PPM business plan, and if comfortable with the general partner, business plan and properties, send the investment to their capital account. And then from there on, you know, you get monthly reports and cash distributions and study those monthly reports to understand what the general partner is doing to increase the value of the property, how the submarket is performing and how the management company is performing. Reviewing these items will make you a better informed investor and make you more qualified for your next investment. So appendix one is building your team. So multifamily investing is a team sport. Before you start making offers, build your team so that when you are ready to make an offer, the listing broker takes you seriously and you are ready to acquire the property. So general partners need listing brokers, mortgage broker, um, property management company, attorneys, general contractor, insurance broker, and investors. So as a general partner, if I handed you a $5 million deal, could you close it 60 days from today? So uh, assuming a $4 million loan, do you have a sponsorship group of key principals to sign with you that have a total net worth of over $4 million and $400,000 in post-close liquidity? Do you have a network of 10 to 20 people that would invest the million dollars in equity, maybe $50,000 apiece? Do you know a mortgage broker that can give you a loan term sheet on the deal? Which property management company would you use to manage the deal? Who's going to do your due diligence inspections? Who's going to complete the rehab? Who's going to do the PPM? Who's going to review your PSA, purchase and sale contract? Who's going to provide you an insurance quote? In order to win a deal, the listing broker and seller are going to want to, and they, they're going to want answers to all of these questions. Individual investors, you need listing brokers, mortgage broker, property management company, attorney, general contractor, insurance broker. And limited partners, you only need one person, general partners. Appendix two, multifamily investment groups. So in the past 10 years, there have been a rise in multifamily investment groups. The cost to join these groups ranges from 5,000 up to 30,000, depending on the level that you join. These groups provide education, networking, access to deals, and a community for multifamily investors that can shortcut the learning curve for new investor, investors. The biggest hurdle for most people is the cost to join one of these groups. If you can get over the cost, here are the advantages. Number one, education. So learning the basics of multifamily underwriting, value add strategies, property management, and review case studies with a mentor. And number two is the network. So access to deals. Listing brokers are more likely to bring deals to a multifamily group than an individual. Members of the group might sell you deals as well. Um, number two, access to vendors. While you build your team, the vendors in the multifamily space will likely be um, at your group's events. Um, third thing, access to general partners. When you need loan guarantors to meet the net worth and liquidity requirements, there are numerous people to sign with you and access to limited partners. So when you need to raise money for your deal, there are many investors already ready to invest in multifamily. You just have to convince them that your deal is the right deal. If you already have access to deals, key principles, limited partner equity, then you probably do not need to join one. However, if you're brand new and do not have friends and family that can sign loans or invest equity, then you probably need to look into joining one of these groups to get started in your multifamily syndication. Appendix three, before you invest in a deal as a limited partner, questions to ask your general partner. Number one, what's your track record? Number two, how are you gonna manage rehab and operations? Number three, how much is the sponsor investing in the deal net of the acquisition fee? Number four, how do I get my money back? How soon? Number five, how is the sponsor creating value? Number six, what type of loan is being used to acquire the property? Number seven, how are general partners being compensated? Number eight, how will the GP communicate with the LPs? Number nine, are you doing cost segregation and taking bonus depreciation? And number 10, why do you like this property more than any other investment opportunity? Appendix four, before you choose a mortgage broker, questions to answer. Number one, what is your background? Number two, how many loans have you closed in the last 12 months? What was the average deal size? 
Number three, how many loans of this type, whether it's Fannie, Freddie, Bridge, have you closed in the last 12 months? Number four, when do I receive approval and lock the rate? How long to close? Number five, how many loans have you closed with this specific lender? Number six, how many first-time investors have you helped get a multifamily loan? Number seven, what happens if this loan is declined? What is the plan B? What issues have you had on previous loans like this? Number eight, what do you charge? When is this paid? Is it contingent on closing the loan? Number nine, can you apply, Can you provide three referrals from current clients? Number 10, how can you help me as an investor besides the debt? Appendix five is multifamily underwriting. This goes into rental income, vacancy, rental concessions, um, and underwriting the EGI, and then also the expenses. Um, the simplest way to summarize this chart is really um, your total expenses should be anywhere from 45 to 55% of your total revenue. Um, if it is not, then you're probably missing something on the underwriting side. But let's just go through it, um, starting at the rental income. So rental inco total rental income is really your net rental collections for the last three months um, annualized. That's how the lender is going to underwrite it, net rental income. Um, other income is typically T12. Taxes and insurance is going to be pro forma based on what you underwrite. Utilities will be T12. Repairs and maintenance will be your pro forma um, in combination with the T12. Property management fee is going to be based on your management company agreement that you sign, payrolls based off of um, your pro forma and uh, GNA as well. And then replacement reserves anywhere from 250 to 300 per unit. And that's going to get to your NOI. So appendix six is just advice from some experts. Um, so Michael Becker, it's four rules. Number one, don't buy in the hood. So location, location, location. Number two, long-term financing. So 10 or 12 year loans. Number three, be fully capitalized to take care of deferred maintenance upfront and any upcoming CapEx items. Number four, choose qualified third-party property management. Dale Walmsley, three, three rules. Number one, don't lose money. Number two, it has to cash flow. Only buy properties that cash flow. Number three, you can't get rich slow. Capital gains can create wealth quickly. Chris Faulkner, three rules. Number one, property less than one mile from a major freeway. Number two, property less than one mile from a grocery store. Number three, a differentiator, location or amenity that cannot be duplicated by another property. So thank you guys for listening. Um, my background, you know, I've originated over $750 million in multifamily loans. And um, prior to Old Capital, I was a senior underwriter for G Capital underwriting uh, commercial real estate loans as a loan underwriter and graduate from University of Texas with finance degree. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, you can see recent deals closed at txmultifamily.com. Check out my LinkedIn profile and my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.